Hello again, everyone. Um, this video is not going to be funny. I'm not even going to make an effort to do a parody or satire or even make a joke. This time, this is me, and it's going to be serious. So this video is directed and addressed to Chris McDonough and the interview room directly. And the message is, it's now time for a public apology to Nomadic Trek and Andrew Masseri winner and to your audience and to anyone else who's an interested party in this recent debacle. Apparently your page has been reinstated. I think it's a poor decision. And I'm going to go over the points now. So first, anyone with a functioning brain knew from the beginning that Nomadic Trek was not Brian Laundry. Despite the overt implications in your first video, there was never anything there. Two people among tens of millions like the outdoors and have a fondness for philosophy. What a super sleuth you've shown yourself to be. We all knew that the first video was a ridiculous stretch of the imagination, and the panel members, who seemingly probably out of deference to their host, accepted McDonough's absurd, unsubstantiated, and very serious accusation that an anonymous tweeter was the most wanted man in America and a possible murderer. Now, we called it out the first day as reckless and irresponsible. And in fact, I began this channel a week ago in response to this situation and at personal risk to myself. I don't blame the guests that were on that first show. They probably respected their host enough to presume that he had done at least a minimum amount of due diligence. Although they certainly should have questioned why this was being published in public and not handled behind the scenes. While I do not know, I imagine that they might have regrets after the fact that, might possibly, that they might possibly have even been used by McDonough for his own interests. McDonough simply primed the brains of his cult-like devotees by insinuating and then pretending to read deep meaning into these prior nomadic Trex tweets. Unfortunately, all the panelists, even if unwittingly, also looked foolish to have played in this silly charade. McDonough told his mob that this anonymous person, this anonymous innocent person, nomadic Trek, was a bad person. And then he went on to claim to have the evidence that he was a bad person. Where is the evidence now? Where is the gloating and infantile taunting? Where is this alleged checkmate McDonough refers to? I thought nomadic Trek was supposed to look over his shoulder because law enforcement was coming to get him. Why is he so actively, calmly, and maturely still posting to this day? Even Mike King from Profiling Evil diplomatically called out this dangerous behavior publicly on his show, but he went short of citing Chris McDonough by name and the interview room. And the interview room. I imagine that he has his own reasons for having done that. And we also knew that Andrew Masseri winner is also not Brian. It looked like a strange name. Some people even assumed that it was, had other meaning. Well, the reason it's a strange name is because it's likely a Tanzanian tour guide with easily accessible and historical content online for anyone to go peruse. Other YouTubers have done great work showing that there is no address for an Andrew Masseri winner in the United States. Why is that? Because he doesn't live in America and is seemingly a Tanzanian national. So where did you get the address, McDonough? Who made that screenshot with the TripAdvisor account? Did someone send it to you? Were you duped by a troll who wanted to make you look bad? 
Or did someone fabricate it for you with Photoshop or with an HTML editor on a local page, which then was screenshot? We all actually fact check, fact check, and we are mere citizens and no ex super cop with alleged access to law enforcement networks, ex colleagues, and possibly insider information. And we knew that it was unprofessional and unbefitting of a self proclaimed ex super cop to even publish such a public accusation in the first place. Any self respecting law enforcement officer, retired or active, would know better than to possibly tip off a fugitive by publicly making it known that he had been outed and exposed. So if there had been any reason to think that Nomadic Trek was Brian, it should have gone exclusively to the FBI until and unless there was a public confirmation from the FBI that that tip was valid and to be made public. Given that it clearly was neither true nor legitimate, nor ethical and completely unbefitting of an ex-super cop with a 40-year career who needs to tell you that every 10 sentences in his public forum, YouTube removed the user and the content for serious and repeated offenses against their terms of service. This is validation of only one of two things. So to his devotees who find that they're somehow validated, by his reinstatement, the validation or the proof here is that the super cop either lied or he got duped. What is the provenance of that screenshot and tip, McDonough? Why don't you divulge that information? You can play at this game. You reveal your sources and we will apologize in public. Whether he knowingly lied or not cannot be determined at this point. We just don't have enough information. But by his subsequent behavior, it's quite reasonable to think that he either knew originally, was responsible, at least in part, for its fabrication, or was gullible and received bad information from a troll or another dupe lower in the telephone chain. YouTube's policies are clear, and their response was clear. Who knows what the justification for reinstating the account was is unclear. On that point, again, we reserve judgment as well, absent any formal explanation or forthcoming information from YouTube. So, there remains only one thing left to do here, and it really shouldn't be negotiable. Chris McDonough owes both Nomadic Trek and Andrew Masseri winner a formal and public apology on his channel without conditions. No ifs and buts will suffice as well as a promise that he will not make the same mistake again and will be extremely careful and cautious going forward before alleging individuals are responsible for some criminal act. This is at least the third time that we know of that this ex-super cop turned YouTube influencer accuses innocent people of committing heinous crimes with no evidence. Michael Crow, which resulted in a $7 million settlement, Jamie Wilson, and now Nomadic Trek. Aussie Insider, a YouTube channel, I think has done a great job of refuting all of the nonsensical claims made in, his, in McDonough's first video with far more rational interpretations and due diligence into the meaning of those tweets, the tweets cited in that first video. And the third video, with McDonough's sudden soft-spokenness and new amateur psychoanalysis, is not even worth mentioning it was so poor. Aussie Insider also has a nice video which shows how easy it is to override a local copy of a browser page. Even a child could perform that trick and take a screenshot and claim that as proof of something. That should suffice to not accept the confirmation video as legitimate, responsible, or honest. It doesn't mean that that's how that screenshot came to be but it is certainly one way that that screenshot could have come to be. And without more evidence, that's all we have, is a simple screenshot, which means nothing. And it's certainly not confirmation, as he put on his video title, or proof of anything. And then there was the McDonough clickbait 
Truth About Crow video, was, which was simply a video clip from his prior night's interview, and it's of his own personal perspective without any challenge from the seemingly comatose interviewers and hosts at the lab that night, and that has been eviscerated by both Just Larry and Perplexed QT, who also made uh, very helpful videos uh, challenging that argument. Not only did it make McDonough look overtly defensive to release that video, given the timing and context, he knows that truth is not determined by the person being accused of doing something wrong. And to use the clickbait approach of putting truth in all caps on the title does not somehow strengthen an already bad argument. So four videos in a row, with the most egregious being his false confirmation video, where, much to the chagrin of his ongoing loyal devotees who still claim that he never made a strong claim, that video and another post he made where he used the word checkmate and then his confirmation video that the Twitter account is Brian Laundry was his strong claim. Again, no ifs, ands, or buts. He made not only a soft assertion, he made a truth claim with certainty, including adding the word checkmate, as if he was caught and it was just a, mo a, a question of time before he was picked up by the FBA, FBI and dragged away in handcuffs. Anything short of a public apology on his platform upon his return will only be further evidence that he knew very well what he was doing that it was all about his personal interest with no concern or moral qualms about possibly ruining a completely innocent person's reputation and putting him and his family in danger from his cult mob. And to the lab channel owner who made the claim that the approximate 2,000 death threats that Nomadic Trek received was not an issue, arguing that because he has an anonymous account, how can there be any risk? How long have you been on the internet, young man? How could you possibly have thought that was a good argument, even if it were so, which it is not? The best skill so-called internet sleuths have is being able to find pretty much anyone to identify someone who is anonymous, given sufficient will and motivation, is uh, not uh, a, a very difficult task if people are truly interested in exposing someone and doxing someone for their own ill intent. That's a despicable and immoral argument. By this logic, it's perfectly okay to send a mob to the social media accounts of someone who is not displaying their real name. That clearly is not only illogical and immoral, it also now leaves you to deal with the moral regret as soon as you find one example of anyone ever who has had their anonymous account doxxed or exposed publicly for all to see with all their personal information their real information given to those, again, who may have ill intent. I'm pretty sure a simple Google search on the topic will reveal just how frequently and common that sort of thing actually is. And if anyone who disagrees with this argument, simply admit that you think this precedent is perfectly okay and everyone should be able to send a mob to give death threats to people on social media, even an ex-super cop and argue that you have even more right to do so if their account is anonymous. And once you make that admission, look in the mirror and realize it's applicable to you as well and anyone you care about who might have any number of legitimate reasons to want to remain anonymous online. Now, in addition to the public apology, this ex-super cop and his public intimidation has to stop. Any law enforcement officer, retired or active, making constant reference and allusion to their deep networks of contacts and colleagues in law enforcement and hints at possibly insider information as an implied threat to someone on social media has to be called out. It's a bad look for law enforcement, and it, and it is an implicit infringement on our public right to speak freely and safely. Is McDonald's rule, McDonough's rule now that anyone who criticizes him will be 
subject to some sort of retribution? Is it, is it an implicit threat that it only takes one phone call to his law enforcement buddies to get your telephone number, your personal address, your vehicle license plate number, or simply send a squad car, squad car by your house to wave at you and let you know that he's watching? All law enforcement officers need to call this nonsense out. It sets a horrible precedent for them to remain silent on this point. Their silence is an implicit approval of this behavior and gives all cops the green light to use their law enforcement clout to intimidate people on social media. Do we all have to worry that just maybe a law enforcement officer online has some possibly corruptible friends on the inside? Do we then need to not feel free to speak our mind? Criticism is not defamation. Free criticism in a healthy civil society is necessary. Being able to criticize a cop without fear of retribution because of his or her, of his or her status is necessary. I've seen it every day since this debacle and before. People are noticeably reluctant to say anything against Madonna, M Madonna, Madonna, for fear of retribution, either from him or from his mob. And that is not necessarily unmerited after what we've seen here. If there were no serious repercussions for this egregious behavior, it sets a dangerous precedent for everyone that one is free to make bald and serious accusations against any individual on the YouTube platform. I'm very disappointed with the reinstatement of the interview room and I hope it was not the result of any less than legitimate motivations. Big pages make a lot of money for YouTube, and I hope this decision was made without any untoward motivations. I will presume that the decision was made in good faith and based on reflection and thoughtfulness. As for myself, I will not be intimidated by anyone online simply because they incessantly bark about their law enforcement credentials. And I would expect that a self-respecting law enforcement official would agree with me that I should not be and that I should feel safe to speak my mind. And while I remain unintimidated, it is important to, know, to note that I have already been accused several times in my short period here on YouTube and on Twitter of being nomadic Trek himself, Brian Laundry himself, and that Benny person, again, with no evidence whatsoever. His mob feels empowered by McDonough's behavior. They don't feel like they need to refrain from this sort of dangerous and threatening and accusatory tone, not in the slightest bit. And his reinstatement only reinforces that. This will be sent to YouTube, Chris McDonough's account, and published on my new YouTube channel which again I began last week for precisely this reason. The behavior I saw increasingly from Chris McDonough and the mob that he incited is, as I said already, irresponsible, reckless, and dangerous. This is not a good look for you, YouTube. You should have used this opportunity as an example of what is not okay on social media and on your platform, and you should have established the correct precedent, and I don't think you did. 